If you're watching this video when it was posted, then about a week and a half ago would have been March 14th, also known as Pi Day. If you don't know what Pi Day is, I don't blame you. It's just a day that math and science nerds kind of commemorate the value Pi, which is approximated as 3.14. And it's also kind of become significant for the Raspberry Pi community. And a lot of people use it as an excuse to work on a new Raspberry Pi project, or sometimes Raspberry Pi itself will release a new product or something on that day. And I personally usually try to do some sort of project around this day as well. I wanted to get this video done by Pi Day itself, but unfortunately I had to order some parts and there were some delays and it just wasn't possible to get it done in time. But I finally got the parts we needed and now we can finally get started. Last year, I made this PwnPi Aloha, which is basically a bad USB that uses Wi-Fi. But this year, instead of building something that's like a hacker tool, which I do usually focus on like security and hacking type things, today I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I've always been interested in like DIY home automation and things like that. So I think what I'm actually going to do is make a DIY security camera system. When I first started thinking about this project, I at first wanted to try to use a Raspberry Pi Pico W to do this because I haven't done that much with microcontrollers before. And I do have a Pico W and I wanted to try to do something with that. And I have seen some projects where people have connected a camera to a Raspberry Pi Pico and been able to take videos or pictures with that. But I think for the project that I have in mind, I actually want to be able to live stream that video feed to a web server. And I think that might be a little bit outside of the capabilities of Raspberry Pi Pico. I may be wrong though, maybe I'll revisit that another time. But for this project today, I think my best bet is actually going to be a Raspberry Pi Zero W. So for this project, my plan is to take this motion sensor and this spy cam, and I'm gonna hook both of those up to a Raspberry Pi Zero W, and then I'm going to try to set it up where I can detect motion with the motion sensor. And then once that motion sensor is activated, it will turn on the camera and then stream that video to a web server that I can access from another machine. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just download the Raspberry Pi imager from raspberrypi.com and I'm going to use this to install the Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card. And once I have the Raspberry Pi imager installed, I'm going to take my SD card and plug it into an SD card reader and then plug this into my PC. Now on the imager, I'm going to choose the device and I'm actually going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero. I don't actually have a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. I probably would use the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W if I had one, but I just don't have one on hand right now. So I'm just going to pick the regular Raspberry Pi Zero and then I'm going to choose OS and it recommends the Raspberry Pi OS Legacy 32-bit. And then I'm going to continue and just start the process of writing the SD card with the OS. Once that process finishes, I'm going to take that SD card and I'm going to insert it into my Raspberry Pi Zero and I'm going to plug it in and then wait for it to boot up and then get started on the next steps. So now I have my SD card set up and I have my Raspberry Pi up and running and I've done all the updates and everything I need to do to get it set up and ready to go. So the next step is going to be connecting this motion sensor to my Raspberry Pi. And this is going to require some basic soldering. And I have mentioned several times in this channel that I am not very good at soldering. So anytime I solder anything, I only have two goals. One, I want to actually make a connection so that it doesn't fall apart or blow up or it actually works like it's supposed to. And two, I don't want to burn myself. If I accomplish those two goals, I always consider it a successful soldering job. Now I also need to figure out exactly how to wire this up to my Raspberry Pi. And it's kind of hard to see here, but this sensor does have three wires and the red wire is the five volt wire. The yellow wire is the out and then the black wire is the ground. And on raspberrypi.org, they actually have a pretty nice little wiring diagram showing you how to wire it up to a Raspberry Pi. I am working with a Raspberry Pi Zero though, so the pins may not be exactly the same, but fortunately using this information in this diagram combined with the pinout diagram I have here for the Raspberry Pi Zero, I think I should be able to figure out how to wire it up correctly. So I'm going to break out the soldering iron. Wish me luck. Okay, the wiring is done. Again, it's a pretty sloppy job. I'm not that good at soldering, but I didn't burn myself, so that's goal number two complete. Now I just need to make sure that it actually works and I accomplished goal number one as well. 
So now to make sure that the motion sensor works, I powered up the Raspberry Pi and now I'm going to write some very basic Python code to test it and see if it's working. Raspberry Pi OS already comes with a pretty easy to use little Python IDE called Thonny, so I'm just going to use that for this project. I'm going to switch it to regular mode just because I feel like it's a better UI. And of course I'm going to go to the options and I'm going to swap the UI theme to dark and I'm going to swap the syntax theme to default dark. Obviously I'm not going to use light mode. I'm not an animal. So now I'm just going to write some very basic Python code to test out the motion sensor. So now that I have my little test code written, now I'm going to run it and see if it works. And you see that I just moved my hand over the motion sensor and it printed out down in the bottom that you moved. Okay, so now I have my motion sensor hooked up and I also have the camera hooked up now, which fortunately did not require any soldering. So now I just need to test the camera, make sure it's working, and then I can add some more Python code. So I'm just going to run this basic little command to take a still image with the camera just to make sure that it works. And there we go, we got a picture from the camera on my Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's from a not so flattering angle, and it may be a little bit blurry, but that's not a big deal, the lens can be adjusted for that later on. All that really matters is that we were able to prove that the camera is hooked up correctly, and it's working, and we can get an image from it. Next, I just need to add some Python code to activate that camera whenever the motion sensor is triggered. And I also want to actually upload that camera feed to a web server so I can access it remotely from like my phone or my desktop PC or some other machine on my local home network. Fortunately, there's actually already some code that they provide on the Pi Camera documentation website. So I'm just going to mostly just copy and paste this code. And I'm just going to make a few edits to add the part about like the motion sensor and a couple little things like that. Okay, so now I have my motion sensor wired up, I have my camera connected, and I've written some Python code to set up a web server whenever the motion sensor is detected and enable a live feed from the camera. So now the only thing left is to test it out and make sure it's working. I will admit that the Python code that I wrote for this is a little bit hacked together and it could definitely be improved, but I think it's good enough for a proof of concept, so let's give it a shot. So right now on my web browser, I'm going to this web server over port 8000, which will be set up in the Python script. And right now it's obviously not showing anything. There's no web server up right now, but I'm gonna start this Python script and then I'm going to activate the motion sensor and see what happens. Motion detected. And now let's go back to the web browser and refresh this page. And there we go, we see the camera activated, the motion sensor is detecting the movement, and I believe that whenever this motion sensor is no longer sensing motion, after a certain timeout period, that can be adjusted with a potentiometer on the sensor itself. I believe that once that timeout passes and it's no longer sensing motion, then it should turn off the web server and turn off the camera. Just to test this, I've moved the motion sensor, so now it's just pointing down towards my desk and shouldn't be sensing any motion. And now that that timeout has passed, no motion was detected and the web server was disabled and the camera was turned off. Again, the Python code that I wrote was very hacky and I could probably make it a lot more efficient and a little bit prettier. So maybe I could make it where the web server actually stays up all the time and it just updates the camera feed whenever motion is detected. I'm sure there are plenty of different things I could do to make this system more user friendly. I really just wanted to do this as a proof of concept to use a motion sensor, turn on the camera whenever that motion sensor was activated, and then push that camera feed to a web server that I could then access from a different machine on my network. And I accomplished all three of those goals, so I'm pretty happy with this project. Again, I wanted to get this video out on Pi Day itself, but unfortunately I had to order some parts and there was a delay in shipping. It was a whole thing, but I eventually got what I needed and I was able to finish the project and I got this video out as soon as I could. But I hope everyone else had a good Pi Day and let me know in the comments if you did any cool projects on Pi Day.